if you could change the laws of nature, what would you change? This question often makes us wonder about the very fabric of our world. Maybe you'd want to fly like a bird or breathe underwater like a fish. Perhaps you'd wish to turn back time and fix past mistakes. These thoughts lead us to a big idea. What if our whole world, including us and our thoughts, is actually a complex computer program? This idea, called the simulation hypothesis, suggests that everything we see, feel and experience might be running on a super powerful computer, created by an advanced civilization or even our future selves. Next are the concepts regarding this question. The simulation hypothesis proposes our world might be a computer program. The simulation hypothesis is a fascinating idea that suggests our entire reality might be a highly advanced computer simulation. Imagine the most realistic video game you've ever played, then multiply that level of detail and complexity by a million. That's the kind of simulation we're talking about. This theory proposes that everything we experience, the ground beneath our feet, the air we breathe, the thoughts in our heads, could all be made of intricate computer code rather than physical matter. It's as if we're all characters in the most sophisticated virtual reality game ever created, but one so immersive and detailed that we can't tell it apart from what we think of as real reality. The implications of this idea are staggering. If true, it would mean that our entire universe, with all its vast galaxies, complex ecosystems, and the entirety of human history, might be running on some unimaginably powerful computer. Proponents of this theory argue that, as our own technology advances, we're getting closer to creating incredibly realistic simulations ourselves. They reason that if it's possible for us to create such simulations in the future, then it's statistically more likely that we're already living inside one rather than existing in a base reality. It's a mind-bending concept that challenges our most fundamental assumptions about the nature of existence and our place in the universe. Scientists ponder if information forms the building blocks of our universe. Some scientists have proposed a radical idea about the fundamental nature of our universe, that at its core everything might be made of information rather than physical matter. This concept is challenging to grasp because we're used to thinking of the world in terms of tangible objects. However, when scientists probe the tiniest components of our universe, things even smaller than atoms, they find that these particles don't behave like solid objects at all. Instead, they act more like waves or clouds of possibilities, only settling into definite states when they're observed or measured. This strange behavior has led some researchers to suggest that perhaps information is the most basic building block of reality. They argue that just as a computer program is essentially a complex arrangement of ones and zeros, our entire universe might be a vast, intricate pattern of information. This idea becomes even more intriguing when we consider it in the context of the simulation hypothesis. If our reality is indeed a simulation, it would make sense for it to be built from information rather than physical matter. After all, computer simulations are fundamentally about processing and manipulating data. The notion that everything, from the stars in the sky to our own thoughts and feelings, might be reducible to information is mind-overwhelming. The laws of physics might provide clues about our simulated existence. Our universe operates according to a set of fundamental laws and constants that govern everything from the motion of planets to the behavior of subatomic particles. Interestingly, some of these laws and constants have properties that, to some thinkers, seem suspiciously convenient, almost as if they were deliberately set up to allow for the existence of life as we know it. For example, there's a universal speed limit, the speed of light, that nothing can exceed. There's also a smallest possible size for things known as the Planck length, below which our current understanding of physics breaks down. Some proponents of the simulation hypothesis argue that these limits could be seen as similar to the constraints often built into computer simulations. In video games, for instance, there are usually limits on how fast characters can move or how small objects can be. These limits help keep the game running smoothly and prevent it from crashing. Could the limits we observe in our universe serve a similar purpose? Another intriguing aspect of our universe is the existence of fundamental constants, like the strength of gravity 
or the mass of an electron. These constants seem to be fine-tuned to just the right values to allow for the formation of stars, planets and ultimately, life. Some wonder if these might be analogous to the settings in a computer program, carefully chosen by the creators of the simulation to produce interesting results. Our consciousness might be part of the simulation or external to it. If we entertain the possibility that we're living in a simulation, it naturally leads us to question the nature of our own consciousness. Are our thoughts, feelings and sense of self an integral part of the simulation or could they somehow exist outside of it? This question touches on deep philosophical issues about the nature of consciousness and free will. Some proponents of the simulation hypothesis suggest that our consciousness could be entirely simulated, that our thoughts and feelings are the result of incredibly complex algorithms running within the simulation. In this view, we would be like highly sophisticated characters in a video game, with our entire mental lives being part of the simulated world. Others, however, propose a different possibility. They suggest that our consciousness might exist outside the simulation and that we're experiencing the simulated world in a manner similar to how we experience virtual reality games today. In this scenario, we would be more like players than characters, our true selves existing in some base reality while we experience the simulation. Both of these possibilities raise profound questions about the nature of identity and free will. If our consciousness is part of the simulation, are our thoughts and decisions truly our own, or are they predetermined by the program? If our consciousness exists outside the simulation, what is the nature of our true selves, and how do they relate to our experiences within the simulated world? These questions don't have easy answers, but contemplating them can lead us to a deeper understanding of what it means to be conscious and to have a sense of self. We might be a recreation of our ancestors in a future simulation. One particularly fascinating version of the simulation hypothesis is known as the ancestor simulation theory. This idea suggests that if we are indeed living in a simulation, it might have been created by our own descendants in the far future. The concept is based on the assumption that at some point in the future, humanity, or whatever we evolve into, will develop the technological capability to create incredibly detailed and realistic simulations of the past. These future beings might create such simulations for a variety of reasons. To study their history in unprecedented detail, to explore different historical scenarios, or perhaps even as a way of honoring or connecting with their ancestors. If this technology becomes possible and widely used, there could potentially be countless simulations of past eras running simultaneously. This leads to an intriguing statistical argument. If there are many more simulated versions of humanity than the original real version, then it's statistically more likely that we are one of the simulations rather than the original. This idea has profound implications for how we think about our place in history and the nature of our existence. Are we the original humans? living out our lives in base reality? Or are we one of potentially countless simulated versions, experiencing a recreation of a long past era? The ancestor simulation theory also raises interesting questions about the nature of time and causality. Scientists search for evidence that might prove we live in a simulation. The idea that we might be living in a simulation is not just a philosophical thought experiment, some scientists are actively trying to find evidence that could support or refute this hypothesis. This search for proof is an incredibly challenging endeavor, as any simulation advanced enough to create our reality would likely be sophisticated enough to hide its true nature from us. Nevertheless, researchers have proposed several potential ways to look for signs that our reality might be simulated. One approach is to search for patterns or regularities in the universe that seem too perfect or too convenient to be natural. For example, some researchers have suggested looking at the distribution of high-energy cosmic rays. If our reality is simulated, there might be subtle patterns in these particles that reflect the computational structure underlying our world. Another avenue of investigation involves looking for glitches or inconsistencies in the fabric of reality. Just as video games sometimes have bugs that reveal their artificial nature, some scientists speculate that a simulated universe might have similar flaws. 
if we know where to look. Some researchers have even proposed that the laws of physics themselves might contain clues. They suggest that if we're in a simulation, there might be evidence of an underlying computational framework in the most fundamental laws that govern our universe. However, this search for evidence faces significant challenges. If we are indeed in a simulation advanced enough to create our entire perceived reality, would we even be capable of detecting it? It's a bit like asking a character in a video game to prove they're in a game. Their entire frame of reference is within the game world. Despite these difficulties, the search for evidence of a simulated reality pushes the boundaries of our scientific understanding and encourages us to think deeply about the nature of our universe. The simulation hypothesis shares similarities with religious creation stories. The simulation hypothesis, despite its roots in modern technology and scientific thinking, bears some intriguing similarities to traditional religious creation stories. Many religions posit the existence of a higher power or powers that created our world and everything in it. In a sense, the idea of advanced beings creating a simulated universe isn't so different from the concept of gods creating the world. Both ideas suggest that our reality was intentionally brought into being by entities far beyond our comprehension. In the simulation hypothesis, the role of the divine creator is replaced by advanced scientists or artificial intelligences, and the act of divine creation becomes the running of an incredibly complex computer program. Yet the core idea that our reality is the product of conscious creation rather than random chance remains similar. This parallel extends to other aspects as well. Many religions suggest that our world operates according to certain rules or laws laid down by the divine, much as a simulated world would operate based on the parameters set by its programmers. Some religions also propose that our actions in this world have consequences in some other realm or afterlife, which isn't unlike the idea that the creators of a simulation might be observing or judging our behavior. These similarities don't mean that the simulation hypothesis is a religion, nor that religious beliefs are equivalent to scientific theories. If you have made it this far, comment down below with the word 100% to confirm that you have received the knowledge from this video. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.